Do you want to tell a little bit of your story, Ginger, while people are thinking of their questions? Sure. Um, you know, my, my story started back in 1979 when, um, when I had worked for a year, my first year, right out of nursing school as a charge nurse in labor and delivery on the evening shift. That's when we worked eight-hour shifts. Um, I was sharing with an undergrad nursing program yesterday that I lectured at um, that I actually got in trouble towards the end of that year because I started giving moms ice chips and letting them get out of bed, go to the bathroom with their 1,000 cc enema we had to give them and quit shaving them from their navel to their knees and started breaking the rules enough that my charge nurse came down on me and said, you know, if you can't, if you can't follow the, the protocol, then maybe you ought to leave. And I said, okay, maybe, maybe I do need to leave. And was fortunate in that a family practice physician and a very good friend of hers, who was also an RN in labor and delivery, had began a private uh, practice uh, focusing on obstetrics and women's health. So I was literally hired um, to, to go sit uh, in a building uh, built in the late 1800s uh, that eventually came a birthing center, the first state licensed birth center in the nation in Topeka, uh, two birth rooms on the first floor, three exam rooms on the second floor, big teaching area uh, in the attic area. It was a glorious pregnant looking building. Uh, and that was the first 14 years of my career. So I really had the opportunity of, of knowing hospital-based care well. I was a scrub tech in labor and delivery for two years while I was in nursing school, then became a charge nurse. So I had three years of hospital, of hospital culture. I was going to say indoctrination, but I do believe hospital-based experience lends to one's critical eye about what and intuition about what is normal and what is moving toward not normal. And that's a great intuition to have uh, when you come into a birth center environment. I think we know that when we graduate, that's one of the core expectations of, of minimal competency upon your graduation. But I do believe that the more you practice in a hospital environment, the greater the tendency is for one to develop um, more concern about how that range of normal is interpreted, uh, both in the biophysical markers of a mom, but in, in your observations. So the first 14 years of my career, um, after that one year from uh, nursing school and labor and delivery was at a birth center, and it really grounded me to go on and do the other things I did um, later. I guess what I, what I see now um, in my more recent transitions in work I've done is that nurses that um, and midwives both that I have hired over the past couple years to go work in a birth center environment needed a greater deal of time to break down their fears and anxieties and sort of separate out how to manage a patient because of the, the loop that you have when you're in a hospital environment. So I think there needs to be, for your expectation as well as those you work with, kind of a, a, an on-ramping period where you can feel free to perhaps transfer where maybe a colleague would not or be more willing to step forward and say, look, I'm not sure about this. Can you give me feedback on what I see or feel or hear or believe? And the other piece, especially for the midwives, is what is your relationship with the consulting physicians? So both, both the obstetrician or family practice doc and the pediatric side, what kind of relationship do you have with them as you start independently in your role? Have you had dinner or breakfast with them? Do they know who you are personally? Have they looked at your resume? Do you know who they are? And the sooner you can establish the confidence yourself as a provider with who your collaborating physicians are, the more comfortable you're going to feel, as Leslie said, you're only a phone call away. 
where you're only a phone call away if you have trust of the person on the other side. So it's really, really important you take the initiative or the facility you're going to takes the initiative to make that happen. And the other thing I'm just going to reiterate, because I think this is the most challenging for midwives, especially those who have been out for a while working in hospitals, is taking care of that newborn. It is like a deer with the headlights when you say, okay, now you're going to manage independently that baby and you're going to do the exam. You're going to discharge them to home and they're, they're literally your responsibility until that baby sees a pediatric care provider. That is terrifying to a lot of people. Uh, and as Leslie said, there are a tremendous amount of resources online now. That may be a topic we should think about doing, Leslie, is is caring for the newborn. Just uh, by itself, right? Just by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot understate how much of an issue that is. And if it's not an issue and you haven't ever cared for a newborn, it, it should be. And the majority of problems from birth centers, um, it's the baby that pays the price. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's very important that you yeah. are familiar with the resuscitating that baby and recognizing yeah. some of the distress early. Um, we are at the top of the hour, but since we um, did offer questions, we're going to stay on as long as you have questions and we'll keep it recording for those who are on a time constraint and need to hang up if you might want to listen later. So feel free to chime in with any questions. <laughs> 